What's going on, everyone? Alex Miller from the Eagle here, joined by Brian, first-year head coach Ricky Tullis. Coach, thanks for lending us your field, first of all, for yeah. Media Day, and also thanks for joining us. Yeah, no, it's been a what a neat neat day. Uh, get to see all these kids and players and fellow coaches, and uh, what an awesome event you guys put on. And uh, we're thrilled to have it here. Thrilled to have it here at our, at our home place. And I was jokingly earlier, it was nice when I drove in today. I said, you know, because you don't have to drive nowhere, so right. you come here and. Uh, that was a neat deal, but we love hosting it here and, and definitely appreciate all the support and publicity for our kids uh, that you guys have shown. Yeah, you know, this being your home home now, have, 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 you, have you gotten used to it now since you got hired earlier this spring? Yeah, it's. A, I tell you, you know, me and my family, we've all got settled in and, uh, and established our, our coaching staff, and uh, it's, it's been awesome uh, to have everybody finally here because – just the move and all those things, all the moving pieces is is uh, nerve-wracking sometimes. But, uh, man, it's been a good deal. We've had a great summer. Uh, very proud of our kids, uh, all the hard work they've put in. And uh, just ready to watch them go out and compete and, and, and uh, do some great things for themselves, their family, and their community. Yeah, you and I got to talk back in the spring before you all started spring ball. But for, for the readers, you know, where have you seen the most growth in your program uh, since yeah. you've gotten here? I just think, you know, anytime there's change uh, and, and, and new program, it's just the, the how-to. I think that's the biggest thing, you know, from the way we stretch to the way we uh, practice to the way we work out in the weight room, all, the whole nine yards. I think that's probably the biggest thing from day one to now. Our kids are familiar. They understand the expectation, the standard, what we want. and. And uh, there's a learning curve early on, uh, but I tell you, our kids are resilient. And from day one, they didn't blink an eye. And, and whatever change there was, uh, man, they took it head on and, and have worked through and uh, now have become accustomed of the way we want it done. Yeah, you won a state championship over at Richmond George Ranch. Mm -hmm. You know, being a first year head coach, what are the challenges and kind of the, the things you need to get done that first year to try and instill a, a championship caliber program? It's 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 what I alluded to a while ago, the, the challenges of just the how to. You know, uh, there's no right or wrong. There's a lot of ways to do things. Um, and and just our way and our program. Uh, that, that's, that's the biggest thing is, is how fast the kids can understand those changes and what you want. Uh, and then they just do it over and over and over to where it's second nature to them. And then you can, I'd like to think you can play at a high level at that point. Um, so those are, that's, that's the biggest thing is just the change and, and getting them accustomed to how we want it done. Well, we'll look at your team now, you know, starting with the offense, who are some skill guys that you know have, are coming back, and sure. some guys that, that you're going to be counting on, maybe a quarterback, running back, yeah. receiver? Yeah, and it it, uh, it starts. I think any offense a lot of times starts with your quarterback, and uh, Malcolm Gooden's a kid that's coming back. Uh, he was injured last year, uh, but had a really had a great spring. Learned the offense and really uh, dust the rust off through that injury, and, and couldn't be more proud of him and his leadership on and off the field. Uh, and then I like to talk about our offensive line. Yeah, I'm very proud of uh, the progress they've shown and, and look forward to watching them. We have five seniors, which is unique. A lot of times you don't have five seniors, and uh, but they're big, strong, and, and tough and uh, really want to continue to watch them grow as a unit, and I look for them to do some great things. Uh, and, and really when you talk about a quarterback and offensive line, those are very, very critical, important positions. And uh, Feel good where we are there. We got to keep growing and getting better there. But I, I love the start that we have there. And then uh, from the receiver skill position, running back, we have a, a four or five running backs we feel really good about, and seven, eight, nine receivers we feel really good about. And and the biggest thing for us that we've been stressing is there's only one football, and not everyone's going to score that night or this and that. And everyone has a role, and and really celebrate your teammates more than yourself, and try to eliminate the selfish that we have um, and, and really for the team because when you have that much talent and skill positions that can score at any time I think that's the the vital part is our kids understand the betterment of our football team and it's not about me or, or I so uh, feel good about that offensively uh, from our quarterback O-line and then our skill positions. You got a guy Tate Allen who played a number yeah. of positions last year 
Where do you see him kind of fitting into the puzzle? Maybe in a diff bunch of different places. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> no, man, what a fantastic kid. Uh, awesome family, brothers off playing ball. Uh, I can't say enough about him on and off the field, his leadership. Multi-sport kid. Uh, and I'm telling you, when I, when I say he can do it all, he can do it all. And uh, we are going to utilize him in a lot of ways. He's going to run the ball some for us. Uh, may play some quarterback for us. He obviously played a lot last year. Uh, he's going to have some roles there. And he's going to play on defense from a linebacker position to a safety position. Uh, we have a hybrid position that's kind of a little bit of both. And, and he's a guy that, that could be there. Uh, I jokingly with the staff the other day, uh, also on punt. He needs to be our personal protector. And, and as I told him, I said, we also got to get him some rest and uh, try to get him his breaks because he does so much for us. But Man, you look up and you, you, you always want to find that, that player to put here and his name always comes up. So we got to be careful uh, to allow him to get his rest and, and those things. But man, what a fantastic kid. Yeah, when, when moving over to the defense side of the ball, when, when you look at that group, a lot of yeah. athletes, who are some guys that you, you might expect to step up in key roles for y'all? Yeah, there's, you know, we, we, have, we have some new ones. Obviously, there's, we graduated some there and uh, you know, I think a lot of it, you know, Matthew Cooks is a kid that, that's played quite a bit there. Uh, Tyson Turner's a receiver, DB kid that mm -hmm. had a lot of interceptions last year. Uh, Tate, we talked about. Uh, but it, it start with the D-line, there's going to be some new faces there. Uh, but we, we, we have a committee there that some kids that can run, we feel good about and can cause some disruption, uh, start with the D-line and then move back to the backer spot, you know, uh, Tate could be up in that mix somewhere, and we got a we got a handful of others that we feel good about that still finding that puzzle um, as we went through spring ball, and we still have some fall evaluation uh, to finalize those things. And then defensive back, like I said, Matthew Cooks is a safety corner type, can play some outside backer as well, uh, kind of a, a cornerstone there. And then uh, Terrence Lewis is a young up and coming, going to be a sophomore. He does receiver and DB. And he's another one that can play everywhere uh, that we feel really good about uh, making some plays uh, from the skill position there. So uh, defensively, we're excited about that group. Like I said, all of them can run. And uh, we're going to continue to find that best 11 to fit that puzzle uh, as we head through fall camp. You're no stranger to 6A, but moving over to Region 2, what would what, you kind of make of the district that you guys were given in the latest alignment? Yeah, and, and to be honest, you know, I'm a little unfamiliar with that. I spent a lot of time in the in the Region 3 Houston area, uh, somewhat familiar with the Temple Wildcats. Had played them two or three times uh, we were at George Ranch. Um, and obviously, you know, from the outside in, you always know of the Waco Midway and, and Harker Heights and the Pflugerville Weisses and Copper Skull. It's a very, very good district and uh, may not have necessarily ever been a part of it or maybe competed against those guys, but from afar you watch and you, and you know good football. And I'm here to tell you our district, week in and week out, we got to be ready to go. And uh, there's a lot of great coaches, a lot of great football programs uh, that we're going to be facing week in and week out. Well, Coach, we're going to let you get back in the shade, and uh, but we're looking forward to covering you guys your yeah. first year. So thanks for joining us. That's yeah, Brian, Coach, Ricky Tullis.